Overlander is presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. In association with Patriot Campers. And in part by Magpul Apparel and Hard Goods. Equipped. Worn. Go prepared. CBI Off-Road Fabrication. Max Tracks. Take the easy way out. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. And the power of Red Arc. Since the very beginning, winches have played a huge role in our expeditions. Without them, many of our trips would have failed or been severely set back. It's a skill we are always honing, and you should too. Andy from Warren has come in to teach the basics to a few of us who are still pretty new to it all. So sit back and relax for a quick seven minute crash course on the basics of winching. All right, how's it going guys? Today, the whole XO crew is here with our good friend Andy from Warren. He came in from Oregon for a couple days to hang out with us to teach us all about winch basics, the fundamentals, the training, how they work, any questions we have, safety, the whole nine yards. So I'm really excited about it. This is an area I've really wanted to get more confident in mm -hmm. and I'm stoked you're here to Glad help to us out. Here, yeah. So we are gonna get grab the team, we're gonna get to it and we're just gonna dive right in and get this thing done. Cool. First question may be, why do I even need a winch at all? So a winch is going to be a really good tool to get yourself unstuck out of a stuck situation in a fast and efficient manner. It does the work for you. It's one of these work smarter, not harder kind of things. So while sure there are other ways to unstick your vehicle or get your vehicle unstuck, this is a really fast and easy way to do it. So I thought we'd go over the basic parts of a winch. Let's just start at ground zero here and really kind of talk about what a winch is and, and the basic parts. So starting on this side, this is gonna be our motor side. So this is your winch motor, and through the front here, or through the center, through the drum, this is the drum, there's a shaft that's going to the gear end side. So motor, here's the drum. Through the middle of the drum, there's a brake inside. The shaft runs to the gear train over here, okay? so. Uh, the gears are engaged and disengaged with this clutch lever. So this is your clutch lever. So when it's on this side, you can rotate the drum when you've got rope on it. And then when you're ready to pull, you would go ahead and turn that into the engaged setting. So then to actually operate the winch, you'll need a remote of some sort. So we include, for instance, this remote with a 12-foot lead. So that gets plugged into this side. This little panel over here would come off like this. So uh, obviously you need to get the, the winch rope on here. So right now we have just the bare drum, but you would go ahead and attach your, your winch line. This is our Spidero synthetic rope. And this gets attached through a hole here in the drum. And then you would wind that on using a combination of your remote and uh, engaging your clutch and going ahead and just spooling that in. Learning to use a winch is a really important thing. And so the best way to do that is to kind of get your hands on it and, and, and learn by doing. So let's go outside and actually take a look at how some of these things work. Okay. Cool. So before we go into the mechanics of winching, I thought I'd tell you, you're gonna run into a different, two different kinds of uh, winch lines out there. So this is gonna be a synthetic rope. This is our Spidura synthetic rope. You're also gonna run into steel cable. And both have their advantages and disadvantages and the choice of which you wanna equip your rig with is totally up to you. Synthetic rope is really lightweight. It's easy to handle and flexible. Steel cable is a bit more heavy duty in terms of durability and it's also heavier in weight as well. Uh, synthetic rope is easy to handle. It doesn't, uh, doesn't develop any sharp burrs where steel cable can develop sharp burrs so it's really important to wear gloves. Synthetic rope also doesn't build up as much potential energy as a steel cable does. So in the unlikely event of a rope failure, uh, synthetic rope is, is going to come drop to the ground immediately uh, and then come back, whereas uh, steel cable has a propensity to build up more energy and can be a little more hard to control. So that's why we generally suggest having a winch line damper on, on the line. If you are going to be winching over things with synthetic, it's a good idea to have this sleeve. This is a, sli a sliding sleeve, like a ballistic nylon sleeve. And you would put that over the apex of whatever you're winching over and then the rope will pass through that protecting it from abrasion. So we're gonna demonstrate a winching scenario here, okay? So here we've got Rufio with a Xeon Platinum winch, and stuck over that way, we've got Samson. So what we're gonna set up here is what we call a single line pull. 
a single line pull is one winch line out from the winch to the vehicle that is stuck. To begin with, what we're going to do is unlock the clutch and that's going to go into free spool mode. So we're going to go from engaged to free spool. It's going to allow the drum to turn. So I'm going to simply click this button on our remote. You'll hear that. That means it's unlocked. So now we're going to walk that over. You can grab onto this hook strap. Do what we call the worn walk. So this is going to be a, what we call a screw pin shackle. This is a worn epic shackle. And so to attach this, all you do is you unscrew this pin and then find your recovery point. So we can go to the back of this bumper right here. This simply fits around here. Go ahead and start to screw in your shackle. What you want to do is you want to get this hand tight and then turn it back about a quarter turn. And the reason for that is once you get tension on this, the whole system here is going to get taut. So you want the hook in the up position, not like this. Now the reason for that is if you have it this way, it's going to come down into the ground. If you had it this way, it would go up. And obviously that's not good. So we want to keep, for safety reasons, we want to always hook up. So one thing we'll also want to throw on here is a, is a damper of some sort. Something to get some weight onto that line. And that's going to just help that line fall to the ground in the unlikely case of a winch rope failure. The next thing we want to do is make sure we get a safe distance away from this scenario. It's always a good idea to have this vehicle with the winch in neutral and your foot on the brake when recovering. You don't want to have this in park if it's an automatic vehicle because there is a, a design in the transmission that uh, could be damaged if it's in park and you could even have to rebuild the transmission because you're going to have metal bits in there. So have it in neutral, have your foot on the brake. So we'll go ahead and just simply use this remote and as you can see it starts bringing the vehicle forward. Yep, you want to walk it and you would like to, you want to optimally get it smoothly and evenly spooled onto the drum. All right, Andy, awesome class. Learn to talk. Thank, Thank you for coming. Yeah. If somebody didn't have you at their disposal, where could they find some more information on winching? Sure, so you can go to warn.com and download our basic guide to winching techniques. That's going to show you all the uh, stuff you need to get going winching and learn how to use your winch. Awesome. Thanks again for having us. Yeah. Thank Pleasure. you again for coming. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you going right now? I'm, uh, excuse me, got to turn down the Taylor Swift. I'm going to go get Clay from Greenland. He was able to come in a few days early. Uh, we weren't expecting this. We were expecting to have to pick him up in Salt Lake on the way to Expo. So it's Friday morning and he gets a couple days at home with the kids, which is really awesome. Yeah, we're gonna go get him. <laughs> hey guys. Welcome back. Thank you. That was a long ways. <laughs> uh, I haven't been on an expedition of that logistical scale and challenge ever in my life. Kurt and I were honored to rejoin the roster on the Expedition 7 team. As a team, we successfully completed the first traverse of the Greenland ice cap along its long axis. We drove across that on the way in, and going back it broke through. The 5,169 kilometer journey began in the south and made its way to Wolfland on the northern edge of the ice cap and back to the west coast over 20 days. The expedition was so incredible and intense that the footage from the Greenland expedition will be held for the final episodes of this season of Overlander. I'm 
have one piece. I have all my fingers. That's good. And I have all my toes. I have my nose. My nose would stick and freeze to the screen on the back of the camera. So this was really sore for a while. Yeah. Everybody and everything is crushing it right now. So, I'm very proud of you guys. Thank you. We're proud of you too. Got me there. You guys got me back. So, oh. <laughs> this truck looks amazing. Yeah. I have to walk around it. Dude, that thing's straight out of like. What is that? Thing? I know, right? It's amazing to see the tundra nearly complete after seeing it in mostly stock condition before I left for Greenland. Now, just a month later, I couldn't be happier with the way the tundra is turning out. So we've got some maintenance stuff to do on our fleet vehicles. You can see Rufio's up on the rack right now. To me, this is the end of the South America expedition. Just gotta get new bushings, uh, some new links, that sort of thing. Just get it running up to speed so we can take it out again on other expeditions, excursions, that sort of deal. So thankfully, our friend Peter from Rising Sun Auto Mechanic, great Toyota dudes. Uh, was willing to come by and help us for the afternoon. With only 24 hours remaining until we hit the road for Expo West, the whole team is hard at work packing and tying up loose ends. I am currently doing pretty much the most important job you can be doing for preparation for Expo, and that's stamping cups. As you can see, I'm doing the most, most important job here. Just cleaning the teeth, the max tracks. So tomorrow we leave for Expo West at six in the morning. It's currently six o'clock Sunday evening. I'm trying to get all the wiring finished up on the S-Pod, make our lights work, all that stuff. Pretty straightforward things, just last minute stuff that's getting done. So once it's done, I'll be a very happy man. We'll have her on the road tomorrow. Today is the big day. We were packing up. Um, we're headed to Expo West down in Flagstaff. Good to see you again, Nathan. You too, Ryan. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, it feels good to be in convoy again, going on a little trip. Uh, it's been eight months, maybe? I don't know. I don't even know what time is right now. I'm so tired. But this is going to be fun. It feels good to be getting on the road. The time has come to go to Expo. But first, there's a special place that we have to go and meet some special people. Okay. Somewhere in the southwestern desert, we meet up with Justin and Sarah, the founding couple of Patriot Campers. This is their first time seeing their new PCOR system in action on a tundra. Do you like it? I love it. You happy with it? I'm super happy. Awesome. Awesome. We brought a present for you all the way. You knew X one? I'm excited. That's gorgeous. This is it, the full, full throat. <laughs> this is loaded with everything. You got the hot water system in it. This is our GT. So this is okay. the trailer that's one camper trailer of the year for five years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's let's not forget. Let's not forget. There's something else pretty exciting uh, here too. Aren't there yeah, is. The big, black truck, the big black truck. The big black truck. Pretty amazing. Black Just truck. the big black. Oh, that thing. Oh, truck. that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. this is such a inspirational truck because it, it was the first time that there was stuff like this, in a way that this was built, that the design, the aesthetics, the function, that like blew my mind when I saw it. And so today to be able to hand over and be working with Patriot Campers and having our own U-Back system, being able to run their trailers, it's, it's a pretty high honor to work with such an innovative company. 
With the new X1 hooked up, we set off to find a campsite. With this being the shakedown trip for the Tundra, it's important to run the truck through its paces. And after 50 miles of dirt road, our first issues arise. What happened, Jeff? Lost shock bolt. So Justin pulled up behind us and noticed that it was something was hanging down back here. So got up and looked and the shock is hanging down. So he sent Ryan down the trail to see if it just happened, hopefully he can find it and we can fix it. Otherwise, we'll have to wait, send someone in the flag staff and grab it and then figure out how to fix it tonight. Look at that rider. Find it? I did not find it. Oh no! Yeah. What are we going to do? I don't know what we're missing other than a bolt. Yeah, it's a shock bolt. Ah. It looks about like this big. Big as your finger? Yeah. We could use your finger. We just plug it. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's do this. Let's send a quick response team Tag. to the, uh, to the, you know. The place with the thing. <laughs> to get the stuff. Right. And that. And then we come back and do the other things and here. And fix. To, so we can do that stuff. Right. I think that's a good plan. Let's do that. That'd be is uh, Eric Olson's fault. Yeah. Because he's <laughs> not here. It's definitely Eric's fault. Eric, it's Eric, Eric's Eric you fault. fly. Eric Olson's fault. <laughs> While Jeff finds a replacement bolt for the shock, we set up camp. We are setting up the trailer for the first time, and Justin is going to walk us through it and show us all the awesome features of this beautiful thing. Hey, what do we got? Hey, what is this thing? First things first. Okay. We'll run through all of this later on. Okay. But the very first thing that we want to do when we pull up to camp. So if we go into the red vision, go to airbags, make sure the compressor's on. Okay. And we'll level the trailer first. Yeah. Makes What's an air compressor? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Unhitch it, put it back on the black truck and let's get out of here because this is going to go nowhere. <laughs> I was just wondering whether it was an American thing or not. Yeah, I'm thinking of another word for air compressor. I'm like, air compressor. So, like, what it does. There you go. Oh, there we go. All right, so now we've got both, both bubbles in the middle. Okay. So the trailer's level. That's all you need to do here. Now, to open the tent, easiest way to do it, if you pop the awning up first. So it just goes straight up. So if we just go around, pull all of these off. Push it up and over, mate. Yep. She got these little magnetic tabs up the top. See where that little red latch is? Mm -hmm. So you just put that little magnet on there. But if it rains, the water will run over the top of the tent and then onto the awning and off the awning. That's nice. So you can that's still awesome. leave all the windows open, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. All of your poles are integrated into the awning, so they just swing out. Okay. So now you can go around and just drop all of these poles out. Okay. You've got a sail that comes off the side here that connects back down to here and okay. connects up back up to the tent. So again, if, it, if you've got bad weather, if it's raining, mm -hmm. you've got access right all you the way through. It. Just go over like this. Just put it here, that click. Yep. So that's locked in One, on both two. sides. Okay. So those two locks. Then over this side, undo this latch here. Fold that down. Okay. So your twin burner cooker. Okay. You got a grill underneath there. So if you want to do pizzas and like toasted sandwiches, omelets and all that sort of stuff. No way. That what? comes in really handy. All of these slide out. So you got easy access. Okay. Now, this is your warranty document. <laughs> okay. Sergey put them in our truck. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I know what, what this is going to get up to. I don't think this trailer has them. no warranty. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not going to need it all right I'll put it, put it in there but all your manuals for all your appliances are in there hot water system the hot water push that once okay then see it goes green uh -huh. yeah that's on that's heating up now that's all you need to do now in here there's timer settings so you can set up if you know you're going to be getting up at six o'clock in the morning set the timer for 5 30. Mm -hmm. so by the time you get up you've got hot water so you're going to put your own fridge in here mm -hmm. um you can fit up to about a 60 liter fridge if this comes out on the dual slot so normally your fridge is sitting on top, so that's your first stage, and then your second stage gives you your kitchen. Alright. So you got plumbed hot water, now the Webasto's on, cold water, all stainless steel, we keep all our plates and that in there. Okay. okay. This is wet storage here, sponges, soaps, 
all mm -hmm. that sort of gear. Brushes. Even yeah. if it's yeah. wet, yeah. jam it in there and then it runs down the front and drips out the front of the trailer. No. You know what I mean? And then this is where you, normally we put a Weber barbecue on here. So you Weber barbecue, the little baby cue fits yep. on there perfect. Uh -huh. Okay. And then this just swings out. We ought to get one of those. With, uh, your, yeah. with your Weber, I don't know why cool. we didn't give you one. but Oh, no, we'll go get one. We should have put one on there. Um, and then your Weber's on there. Sweet. So you can be like grilling out here, the kitchen's going on. Yeah. You're good. That's probably the real, the Aussie, real yeah. quick run through, Aussie. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's all there. You're welcome. Happy birthday. <laughs> I don't know if it's my birthday or Christmas. <laughs> I think it's both. It kind of seems like both. It's a bit of both. <laughs> For like five years. But look, as far as it's got all the luxuries that, that you want, you know, when you go out doing what we do. Yeah. But more importantly, the most important thing for me with everything the Patriot produces is it'll always get you back home. Yeah. Always. Not sometimes. That's we have never, ever, ever had a structural failure on a Patriot camper, ever. And when you say a structural failure, what does that mean? A failure, a structural failure to something like a structural member, say the chassis or the suspension, where a customer hasn't been able to tow a trailer back home. The X1 is rich in features, but compact and lightweight. There's tons of storage for the weekend excursion or your next long haul expedition. We look forward to traveling with this Australian proven trailer and putting it to the test. As the sun sets, we settle in for an evening of good food and even better company. This is what the spirit of overlanding is truly all about. So it's Clay's birthday today, and we wanted to do a little special dessert for her. So we found chocolate. Uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Clay. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. We arrive at Expo the next morning and get right to work, setting up for this year's booth. This year we are honored to feature General Tire's all-new ATX tire and X Overland's new merch. Expo apparently starts at 9, but as usual there's always tons of people here just really excited, so we're just running around trying to get everything set up. Overland Expo West is the premier overlanding event in the world. It's an epicenter of overlanders coming together to get trained, swap stories, and learn about what's new in the overland community. For us, it's one of our favorite events of the year because we get to meet so many people who are passionate about vehicle-based exploration. Who's that? Uh, we got a graduation invite from Faith. Sadly, Faith, we will be in Washington, but we appreciate the invites. It's Saturday night and a few of us from the Greenland Expedition are able to share our experience with the Overland community. It's like, oh my goodness, like every day we're learning something that makes it work a little easier. Uh, but it's really interesting to travel nonstop at minus 30, minus 40, um, not having hot meals. Greenland was a huge accomplishment, especially for Greg Miller. It was truly an adventure of a lifetime, and what a beautiful night to celebrate that accomplishment. Uh, thanks everybody for coming out and uh, stick around and we're going to start slinging. Not too long after the panel, our annual party with Equipped is kicked off. <laughs> On Saturday night at our annual party with Equipped Expedition Outfitters and Expedition Overland. This is one of the favorite, my favorite nights of the week. We get to hang out with all the like kindness people that are into this stuff. Yeah, we just have a blast and we, I can't say thank you enough to everybody who's been here that has supported us and uh, I think we got some really good things ahead of us and, and tonight is one more 
energizing things that we do during the year. So here's to what's next on Expedition Overland. Let's go! Yeah! <laughs>